quarantine says. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen for the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. As Christians, we have the great blessing of being able to sense, feel, and even spiritually hear God in our lives. That doesn't mean we always understand Him all the time. Um, just like we can't see the wind, we know that it's there because we feel it. So I have an activity. First, I'm going to need a volunteer. Alrighty, so I have my lovely assistant Dominic here. Say hello. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to start our activity. And I have to blindfold you. Alright, let's see. Okay, can you see? A little farther down. A little further down. Okay, how's that? Can't see. Okay, perfect. That's what we want. So, I have a glass of water. We're going to stick his finger in the water so it's nice and wet oh, cool. and cold <laughs> and then i'm gonna blow on one or the other sides and he's gonna try to guess which side it is all right you ready okay can you feel which side which side no nope. <laughs> all right let's do it we'll do a couple more Did you feel it? Which side? No. <laughs> That's all right. All right, let's do a couple more. Did you feel it? Yep, that was right. All right, let's try again. Yep, that was right. So about 50-50. Let's do the tiebreaker. No, the other side. <laughs> All right, let's take your blindfold off. So that wasn't easy, was it? It was a little tricky, huh? A little, yeah, it was a little tricky. Um, so it's hard to tell which way it was coming from. Um, so it wasn't easy, but you could definitely feel it, right? It wasn't easy to tell which side, but it was definitely there. Um, it's kind of a little mysterious, huh? A little mysterious yeah well that's how it is with um god and his direction um sometimes it's hard to tell what he's trying to say to us but it's definitely he's definitely there and we can he's always there and we can trust him even though we can't see him right all right so let's pray father god Thank you so much for this great reminder and this fun little game to, to remember how even though we can't see you, you're always there for us and we can trust you even though we can't see you. And um, I just pray for all of the families and um, children that are watching this video that <clears throat> you would they would just grow closer to you during this time. And we just thank you so much for all that you do. In Jesus. Trust, trust God, God even when you CV free. Thank you for joining us on this awesome Sunday morning. We are so excited to be worshiping with you. Please sing along with us this morning as we go through these songs. A couple of them are new for us on Sundays, but you've probably heard them if you've watched our Jesus Music Friday night uh, live worship sessions. Uh, so sing along with us. Follow along with the words. Even if you're not that familiar with the song, pray on the words. Take your time reading through them and let them sink in, the meaning behind them, especially on this day, as we continue to forge ahead with this online format. We are
are still the church. All of us in all our different homes and all our different spaces, however scattered we may be, we are still the church. And God is still on the move. And he is still good. And he is calling us to do new and brave things. And so this morning, church, as we sing, let's consider that. The awesome things that he is calling us to. And let's sing his praises. We are the church. We are marching on. Let's sing together. as we continue in our time of worship, we're going to be singing together a song that's just a great reminder of who our God is to us and the power that he gives to us and our ability to meet together over a distance as we are today, um, no matter what's going on in our lives, culture, society, no matter what's happening around us, we have this power of fellowship through Christ, this brotherhood, this sisterhood, this just, this all-encompassing family. And we, we call back to the book of Acts in the early church when it was dangerous to even think about the love of Christ and Christ's ministry. And there are some similarities to how we're worshiping together today and the timeless 
thing, the capital T truth is that Jesus is the way maker, no matter if it's 100 AD or 2020, uh, Jesus is always the way maker. And that's exactly what this worship song is all about. That is 
continue in our time this morning, church, getting ready for our time of prayer and continuing to contemplate being a church that is still on the move. We're not meeting together in one building, but church, we are following in the footsteps of our ancestors of the early church. They laid this awesome, fantastic, incredibly Holy Spirit-driven groundwork of how to go into all the world and make disciples. And they did it without a building. They did it without programs. They did it without the internet. So church, our reach is not hindered because we can't meet together in a building all at the same time. This is a special time for us.
Good morning, church. Pastor Jim here. Just want to take a moment as we're getting ready for prayer to remind you that you can go to our website, cvfree.church forward slash prayers, and leave us a prayer request or any praises or any ways that God's working in your life. We love to celebrate with you as much as we love to pray for you. So let's come to prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the ability to get together and to be your church. Father, I just, I pray that you just continue to work in the situation. You continue to move and show yourself and just be, use us, Lord. Father, I, th I thank you for Pastor Jen and the leadership that she's given us. Father, I can't imagine what it's got to be like to lead a church in this pandemic time with all the changes and so sudden. But Father, we thank you for her because she's doing a fantastic job. And Lord, I just, I thank you that we have our conference and the superintendent that, Lord, that are going through the steps they have to take in order to open church back up. I know, Lord, it's going to be a long road. And it's going to be a long time before we're back into our buildings and, and doing church again together. But Father, that building's not the church. We're the church. So Father, I pray that you use us. Help us to grow in you. And then use us to reach others. Help us to make disciples of people. To use this new technology, the new ways that we found to reach people and to continue to use that, Father, to, to reach people for you. As things start to go back to where we're able to be together, Father, that we continue to learn from the, the situation and, and that we grow as a church. That, Father, we meet people where they are. So use us. Continue to guide Pastor Jen as she makes decisions that are hard and difficult to make. Continue to, to work with Superintendent Pam in our conference as they continue to make hard and difficult decisions. And Father, I pray that every one of us has their back. And that we understand that this is a difficult time. And that we're raising Pastor Jen superintendent pam and the whole conference and our whole denomination up in prayer and praying for your boldness your protection and your guidance father use us cleanse us protect us keep us safe thank you lord in jesus name amen thanks church Good morning, CV Free Church. It's Pastor Kathy, and it's Connect Time. So I wanted to reach out, as I do each week, just to be able to talk a little bit about what we've got going on at CV Free Church. And we really wanted to encourage you, if you're feeling anxious or feeling frustrated with what we've got going on and all of the changes and just the pace that things are changing as far as in our community right now and in our society, we want to encourage you to reach out. Reach out through our website, reach out through Facebook, um, send us a message, send us a message, or I'm sorry, give us a phone call, leave a message in the answering machine. Someone is checking those messages and we will reach out to you. And so as we consider that, and I want to encourage you to go to the website, use it as a virtual connect card. I know you're used to maybe on Sundays, me standing up front with a connect card and saying it's connect time, but let's encourage you to use the website as a connect card. You can update your contact information on the website. You can um, pray, put a prayer request or an answer praise up on the website on our prayer wall. You can watch past sermons. You can watch through YouTube this message for today. So we really want to be able to encourage you to use that. And also, Right Now Media is on there. Right Now Media is our gift to you. And it's a resource for not only new Christians, but existing Christians. And to be able to utilize that information to continue your walk with God.
And I've got some exciting news. Growth groups are coming back. I know we've talked in the last couple of weeks about we have the online offerings, but in-person growth groups are coming back. Um, we'll be launching those starting actually tomorrow. And what that's going to look like, it's going to be a combination of in-person groups, also online offerings, and there are a few groups that will stay completely online. And so in the comments below, in the caption below, you should be able to see this sign up, but you can also, if you, you're too busy watching me and um, can't follow that right now, you can just go to cvfree.church and look for the growth group section and you should be able to sign up for all of the offerings there that are available. If you see one that you're looking for that's not there yet, send us a message. I'll respond to you and let you know what's going on with those because we're working really hard at this and some of the growth groups are um, starting immediately and some it's going to take a couple of weeks to get them going. So um, I just wanted to say thank you, and I wanted to say that we're looking forward to seeing you next week. You can either join us on Facebook, the website, or through our Google Meet offering. Have a blessed week, and God bless. Hey church, great to be with you this morning, afternoon, or evening. Whenever you're joining us, we're glad you are. So I wanted to just take a moment and say that I pray this message helps to promote connection with each other and with the Lord. You know, it's interesting because we're not really able to connect with each other as we are accustomed to doing, right? So that may seem sort of odd that I would suggest that, but we are so pleased that June is going to mark the month that we are going to launch our growth groups. And some of them are going to have in-person offerings, many of them actually. Now, for those of you who have found the virtual option to work better for you, that is also going to be an option in many cases. So please do keep an eye on our website so that you can use that to sign up, as Pastor Kathy mentioned. We also have some other groups that are going to continue to roll out through the month of June. And we're just really excited to be able to offer this opportunity for connection, again, with each other and ultimately with the Lord. So I pray that you are contemplating how you can get plugged in in that way through the summer months. And so as I shared on Friday during my live session with you, that's really the way we are going to be focused on spiritual connection through the summer. And we just want to encourage you, as I mentioned, to take advantage of that. See the ways that God can work in your life through these groups that are being offered. I know that he will bless us as we step up and take part. I also want to let you know that it is the opinion of our conference leadership and, and of me as well, that we want to be able to gather again when we don't have copious restrictions and awkward guidelines that are going to make it feel unnatural for us to be at church. Our CV Free staff really is excited to be able to come together again when we can focus truly on the Lord and not have those other distractions at work, which is why we're really focused and excited about our growth group offerings. I want to give a special shout out right now to our growth group leaders who are definitely in new territory as they lead these offerings. What a blessing you are to our CV Free Church family and to our community. Thanks for all you do. So as I keep that in mind and I just think about firm foundation, I want to hone in today on this topic of seeing the unseen, seeing the unseen. One of the verses that I often share at funerals to offer encouragement is 2 Corinthians 4.18. And this week, I found myself realizing that I shouldn't wait until someone passes away, until the next funeral, to be able to really talk about what this verse means. Um, death can be a sad time, clearly. And even if we know that we're headed to a better place in heaven, it's still really challenging for us to grapple with the loss 
that death leads to for those of us who are still here. It still can be scary to contemplate that unknown of where we're headed next, meaning that if we have Jesus Christ in our hearts and we have a personal relationship with him, we know that we have been promised eternal life in heaven. And we read in the Bible about the gloriousness of heaven, but because we haven't tangibly experienced it yet, many of us still have hesitation about going there, right? And so it's important for us to think about this verse and what it might mean for us. 2 Corinthians 4.18 So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. This verse encourages us to focus on what we can't see. The Lord and our connection to him through Jesus Christ are not visible to the naked eye. We pray the fruit that comes from our relationship with him is absolutely evident to observers that that can be seen. We pray for transformation in attitude, in our demeanor, in our actions, in the ways that we serve and give. We pray the evidence of Jesus in our lives is absolutely seen by others. But the fact of the matter is that we cannot reach out and touch Jesus as first century AD followers of him did. We don't have that kind of access. We can't directly hear from the ultimate teacher the messages in our Holy Bible. Unfortunately, the way the evil one works is similar. He too is working in the realm of the unseen. In fact, the way the coronavirus or any other virus operates reminds me of the enemy's tactics. It's interesting, as Pastor Scott Bales has said, I think one of the reasons that viral outbreaks are so scary to so many people is that you can't see the enemy. Germs and bacteria are microscopic so that you can never see them coming. If infected people or surfaces have a green glowing aura or something like that, we would know who to avoid and what not to touch. But we can't see microbes like viruses. And that, I think, just escalates people's fears. People become infected with disease, and in some cases, very sadly, they may die. Similarly, when people become afflicted with the enemy's plans, For their lives, they head down a path that leads to death. What is produced from that life is less like fruit and more like weeds. Weeds that choke out the rest of the fruit-bearing crop. I've spent a fair amount of time over the years weeding. Perhaps you have too. Maybe there are gardeners sitting out there right now. Have you planted yet? It's been gorgeous, hasn't it? So as we think about these weeds, um, you might know the ones I mean, those ones that are sort of like clover and they're very thin stalked and they pull out very easily. Those are the kinds of weeds we all I mean, if we have to love weeds, but those are the ones that we feel like, okay, uh, those I can handle because they're just an easy boop and it's gone. Dandelions, oh man, they can be so much more challenging, right? And it doesn't work well enough to just pull off the leaves and the stem. You have to actually dig out the root. Otherwise, you're going to be seeing the same exact picture all over again in just a short time. And then how about dandelions when they get that fluffy gray top? Oh, how fun as a kid to go ahead and blow those seeds everywhere, right? But as we grow, we realize that that's really not such a fantastic situation because what what is that doing? That's sharing those, those weed seeds so that they can grow more. And how about those roses? Those, oh, what are they called? Those roses that are just so nasty, multi-floral roses. We have apple trees and the multi-floral roses have just grown in and amongst those apple trees trying to choke the life out of them. And of course they have thorns and everything too. Those are the kinds of weeds that are not fruitful, that are not helpful. They're damaging. 
and we want to pull them out and get rid of them. We don't want them to come back. They are awful as they choke the life out of the vegetation like our apple trees, like our vegetable plants. They just want to consume what bears fruit, choking the life out of those trees. Because we can't tangibly see the Lord, it is the fruit that we look for in the lives of those who follow him, fruitfulness that brings life as opposed to the harmful growth that comes from the work of the unseen enemy. As we read in Galatians 6, 7 through 10, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So, let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. While God is using his people to sow seeds of truth and righteousness, the enemy is at work producing evil and trying to choke out that goodness of God. In some cases, unspeakable evil takes place that just wrenches our hearts and makes us sick. In other cases, the enemy is more subvert, planting seeds of doubt and uncertainty. At times, even in those who have made some level of commitment to Jesus. How can this happen? As a pastor, I'm aware of the circumstances of the coronavirus that have been used by the enemy to have people distance themselves from the literal church building, the physical building, from other believers, and even from their personal relationship with Jesus. Now, not everyone has been affected that way, but some have. Particularly, if we came into this pandemic with a weak foundation, it is a time of testing as we try to resist the traps the enemy is setting to discourage us and cause us to topple. As I offered early on in this series, social distancing does not mean savior distancing. Actually, challenging times like these are times to pull closer to the Lord, not allowing distance to creep in. One of our devotional readings from this week told a story about uh, Pastor Greg Laurie and an experience that he had. As he explained years ago, he was in a mall in Hawaii when a man came up to him and recognized him and sparked up a, a conversation. They started talking, and when Pastor Greg asked him where he went to church, he said, well, I haven't really been in a while. I've been on a spiritual vacation. So Pastor Greg went on to explain that they had a good long talk. And by the end of it, this man had made a recommitment to Jesus Christ. And the next step was going to be reconnecting, I'm sure, to a church family. Pastor Greg went on to point out the fact that when we're spiritually lethargic, we become more vulnerable don't go on a spiritual vacation, he says. The moment you stop going forward spiritually, you will start going backward. The moment you fall asleep spiritually, you'll be weak and vulnerable. The title of that devotional was actually No Spiritual Downtime. It's interesting. When you let your guard down, the enemy knows it. And boy, does he just want to swoop right in and control you, control you in a negative way, choke the life out of you like those awful multifloral roses. Even this week, I found myself feeling discouraged that perhaps the effects of this coronavirus would lead to our church being hurt, that people would slip away and stop giving their attention to worship, prayer, connections, the message and reflections. This was a concern of mine, was a concern of mine. But then I had a talk with a fellow believer, a brother in Christ 
who reminded me of some powerful words spoken when I was ordained, when anyone is ordained in our conference, in our denomination. As a newly ordained pastor, I was encouraged to take authority in God's work as I led his church, to call upon and embody the power of God that only he can give. This overcomes doubt, fear, anxiety, complacency, and any other trap that the invisible enemy would use to defeat those of us who want to remain optimistic and positive during this pandemic, during all of these adjustments, to have the assurance that God is powerful, all powerful, and capable, more than capable, of protecting the mission and vision of his church. If I, as the lead pastor of CV Free Church, become discouraged about God's ability to effectively work through his church in the midst of trials, how can I possibly lead? That's not leading. That's following the path the enemy wants me to be on. And so there is no room for discouragement here. Instead, I want to thank you, church, for being the motivation that I need, the accountability that I need to be able to give the answers that are safe and make sense in the midst of all of this, to not give in to emotional defensive decisions that would cause me to be someone other than who God wants me to be. That instead I can have peace and extend that peace to you, encouraging you that the enemy wants to discourage you during this time. Don't let him. Take authority in the God you know, the God we know and worship and trust for everything at all times. He is good. 2 Corinthians 4.18, do you remember? So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. I want you all to know that your leaders are gathering and having powerful conversations about what our our, our all-powerful, all-knowing, unseen God is going to work through these challenging times. I expect that we will have some exciting announcements to bring to you over the course of the next several months. Please don't think for a moment that God is not working behind the scenes because he is. I promise you, he is. Please use this time to reach out and connect with your church family. One thing that we've learned from this pandemic is that the virtual connection can be a viable substitute for those who previously may not have been able to come to our church, whether it's someone who is elderly and shut in, or whether it's someone joining us from North Carolina, hey Vicki and family, or Oklahoma, um, Gina and Chad's family down there. I and mean, we've got all kinds of people who are joining us, Ina from Oklahoma. And I just think about the reach that God has to be able to bring the message through CV Free Church, not just all around Chenango County, but even into other states and even potentially other countries. Wow, that's awesome. What is God going to do with that virtual connection? Let's capitalize on that for the cause of Christ. Absolutely. I realize that it isn't exactly the same, but it is a connection that can breathe life and encouragement. Let's see God work through our growth groups this summer in order to build those bonds with one another that are strong and lasting. Bonds that can't be created, honestly, on a Sunday morning when we, we don't have that kind of time to be able to sit and talk when we're engaging in corporate worship. Jesus himself showed us the value of developing personal connections with one another. In Matthew 9, 10 through 12, what did he model for us? The scripture tells us later, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests. 
along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he said, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. He knew exactly who he needed to be with, be sharing with in that intimate atmosphere of the home environment, the small group environment. Or in Luke 19 with Jesus and Zacchaeus. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region and he had become very rich, unfortunately not by honest means. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass by that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today, knowing full well the connection they were going to be able to develop in that smaller group atmosphere. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor Lord. And if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. Abraham, For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. And how did he do it? Through that smaller atmosphere connection. Obviously, I so look forward to when we can worship together, mask-free, we can just sing out and, and praise God and be together. Absolutely, I do. But until that can happen, let's focus on these options that Jesus himself showed us work. It works to be able to connect with people in that smaller group atmosphere. The connections we can build with people. Look at what Jesus did in these circumstances. The people others thought were not worth his time. He made time for them and through him, Through that time spent with him, their lives were transformed. We had these tax collectors who were really being thieves, stealing from people, taking way more than they should have been so that they could keep um, too much of a cut for themselves. They felt convicted in that. They were held accountable. In a small group atmosphere, we can have that kind of level of connection and trust with one another. It's vital to our growth. People's lives, like Matthew and Zacchaeus, were absolutely transformed through their small group interactions. The more personal connections led to these men who were previously immersed in sin, doing the work of the evil one, to realize that they were on that evil path and make a drastic change in the direction of good. And as the early church continued with this format, Acts 2, 42 through 47, tells us that the believers formed a community. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And do you know what that collective effort led to? Each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Every day, people were giving their lives to Jesus. That's pretty fantastic. Wouldn't we just love to have that happening in our community? 
May that movement be smart, sparked through the small group interactions that we have to build those systems within, those connections within those smaller groups so that we can be discipled and, and we can grow to be at that level of being able to come alongside those who need us. Every day, people were making a choice to follow Jesus. And those decisions came as a result of the close-knit connections that people were making with each other and with the Lord. As they gathered together in small groups and large, but let's focus on these parts of, I mean, very regularly, they were meeting in small groups together, eating and sharing, praying, reading the word. As a collective unit, they bonded with one another and became that much needed support system for each other. Are the people of today much different? I would offer that we are not. We still benefit from personal connection with each other, for support, for accountability, for learning, and for growing. We are designed by God to seek Christ connections within ourselves, our church, and our community. When we are living that out, we experience a fullness that is otherwise absent. While we can't tangibly see the Lord, we should see the fruit being produced because of people following him. That should be what people do see. Now, I want to point out that this does not mean Christ's followers are perfect. We are not perfect. We are imperfect humans who continually rely on the Lord in order to resist those traps that the enemy sets for us. Unfortunately, sometimes we fail. Sometimes we sin. And we have to ask for God to forgive us, redeem us, help us be on a corrected path. I mentioned evaluated experience last time. Same thing applies here. How can we take the mistake that was made, evaluate it, and not replicate it moving forward? Make a different choice that is fruit-bearing, not weed-bearing. We don't need to plant any more multifloral roses or dandelions. We do need to plant more seeds that will grow fruit, metaphorical and literal. <laughs> With the Lord as our helper, this will be possible. And so I thank you for joining us. And I want to turn this over now to Pastor John, who's going to help us continue to reflect on how God is moving in this message. Good morning, church. It is a beautiful week this week. Glad you could join us. I hope you've had a chance to enjoy the weather um, and get outside and do some relaxing. Churches, I think about Pastor Jen's message this morning. I can't help but think about how in the Bible it tells us that anybody who is connected to Christ should be bearing fruit. So in our faith walks, we, as we draw nearer to Christ, we should have some sort of a spiritual fruit that is an evidence that we are connected to the vine, that we have been given this new life. And what better way to do that than to get engaged in growth groups? They're coming back, guys. There is going to be some offerings for in-person meetings, some for online options. So I encourage you to please check out the growth groups that are coming up. Find a way to get plugged in. Be in discipleship and learning opportunities with somebody so you can help get your deeper rooted and bearing your spiritual fruit. As we think about that, let me pray for us in our week ahead. Heavenly Father, we, we just thank you for what you do in our lives, the fact that in you we have this new rooting which attaches us to the vine of Jesus, and that through that connection we are able to bear fruit, and that that fruit is an evidence that shows other people what Christ is doing in our lives and allows us opportunities to share what he's doing, to demonstrate what he's doing, and encourage others in their walks as well, Father. I just pray that you would put a 
hunger for that connection and everybody that's joined us this morning who may hear it during the week whoever's hearing this message father i just pray that you would put a, a hunger in them to draw nearer to you and to have lives that demonstrate that as we live the, out our faith walk father god i also this morning want to pray for our, the gifts the tithes the offerings that may have come in father we just pray that you would continue to uh, bless those who, who are acting in obedience that you would continue to multiply those gifts and father most of all we ask for wisdom and discernment as we decide where those get used how they become the hands and feet that go out and do the work that will build your kingdom father we just pray that you would continue to bless us in this way and that you would guide us in this way and father we also pray that you would continue to put your hands of protection on each one of us that you would bless us as we come into our new week that you would allow us to take time to refresh ourselves in you to reset refresh ourselves physically spiritually in health by getting outside and just enjoying the creation that you've made father we just ask that you continue to shine down upon us and father we ask all of this in jesus name amen church god bless have an awesome week